This is going to be an eight-part tutorial on how to solve the Rubik's Cube 3x3. As you probably know, I have already created a 3x3 tutorial, but in that one, I sound like a nerd with a cold. So I have decided to remake it, make it sound better, and make it much clearer and concise, and answer all questions that I had not in the previous video. So this first step to solving the Rubik's Cube 3x3, it is very, very um, suggested or uh, I would highly suggest that you learn the notation for a Rubik's Cube 3x3. So, if you hold the white face in front of you, and the blue face on top, as with all the cubes in the background, you have four main faces that you will be using while solving the cube, and then you have two other ones, which are rarely used. The first side that you need to know about is the most common side, which is the R side. If white is on front and blue is on top, your right side will be the red side, or the side on the right side of the cube. The left side will be, obviously, the side on the left side of the cube, which in this case is orange. Then the U face, or the up face, is the blue one, or the top, and the front face, which is the one that you are facing. That is the front face. When turning a side, you turn it around the centerpiece. So if I were to turn the front face, I turn it around the white side. If I were to solve, turn the right side, I turn it around the red centerpiece, and I turn it like this. So, the notation. If you were to see an R, a capital R in notation, as you can see in the annotation at the bottom, a capital R means turn the right side. Now, if it's just a capital R, you turn the right side one turn clockwise. And clockwise is, if, is as if you're looking at the face. So just a normal R, this is still your front, I'm just t turning it so you can see, is turning the right side clockwise. Now, in R prime, or an R with an apostrophe after it, as you can see down there, is turning the right side counterclockwise one turn. And then that same idea can be applied to all six sides. So a U, as shown at the bottom, without an apostrophe, is just turning the up face clockwise once. And then a U prime is turning the up face counterclockwise once. Now this standard notation makes describing certain moves much easier and much faster as long as you understand notation. If you don't understand notation, it will be very hard for you to uh, solve the Rubik's Cube and then move on to higher, uh, to other cubes, such as the 4x4, or even just getting faster at the 3x3. I will be using notation in all of my videos, so I would suggest learning notation, um, but you could stumble along without it, but I still highly recommend it. So, one more thing, I'd l one more thing I would like to mention to you is a letter with a 2 after it. So if I were to put U2, as shown at the bottom in an annotation, a U2, most of you can probably guess, would be to turn the top face twice. Now I don't need to worry about if there is an apostrophe after it, or a prime symbol, or not, because if you do the U2 clockwise, this is going to be here, and if you do the U2 counterclockwise, it's still going to be there. So turning a face twice, it does not matter which direction you turn it in. So just whichever one is easier for you to figure out. Now one quick thing I need to mention is when you're doing the left side. Since you're used to turning the right side clockwise by turning it up like this, you may be tempted to say that this is L, but that's wrong. Because if you look at the left side and you turn it up from the front like this, you're actually turning it counterclockwise which means that this is an L prime. That is the only side that it matters on, because the other three are very easy to visualize as you're looking right at them. But on this one, turning it up like this is an L prime. So just remember that when you're turning a face, be sure to act as if you're looking at it. So I still know that white is my front, red is my right. So since orange is my left side, I want to do an L prime, which means I turn it counterclockwise or an L is clockwise. 
now. Um, I will teach you the other two possible moves on a 3x3 Rubik's Cube right now, but you do not need them except for the very last step of solving the Rubik's Cube. So, the one that you'll be using in the last step is the D face, or the down face. So with white as front, and blue as top, I have green as my down face. So again, just like any other side, you pretend as if you're looking at that side before turning it. So if you see a D, you act as if you're whole looking straight at the down face, and you turn it clockwise. Now that is a D move. So a D prime would mean turning it like this. Then, the last side, which you will not be using in the beginner's method, is the back face. You have the front and the back. If you have white front and blue top, or blue up face, then you ha you're going to have a yellow back face. So you just pretend as if you're looking at the face before applying any moves. So if you get a B, then, you know, the white is still your front, so you're going to do a B. And then a B prime is just turning the back layer counterclockwise. The three sides that it's easy to do notation with is the up, front, and right, which are also the easy, uh, the most commonly used moves because most people are right-handed. The other three moves that are a little harder to deal with are the D moves, the L moves, and the back moves. Turning all of those are counterintuitive because if you're turning the front face clockwise like this, you'll think that turning the back face clockwise is in the same direction. But that's not true. When you're looking at it, clockwise is the opposite of what you would think when turning it from the front. So now, if you will click the link at the bottom of your screen here, or in the description, on your right, you will be taken to the first step in solving the cube, which is solving the white cross.